I'm sure a lot of us know, and I'm sure we've heard messages about John chapter 4. Awesome chapter. I'm only taking little select pieces out because I want to apply it to this sliding door part where you're going about your business and almost in her in her case this is the woman at the well the story of the woman at the well she's operating in a heavy level of shame right to go out to the well at the middle in the middle of the day when it's so hot it's because you want to avoid the other people seeing you and you know and we know why now but we only know why because Jesus got a prophetic word right so think about that for a minute as we're learning how to operate in the gifts of the spirit there's a, uh, there's a part like then there's training wheels on, right? Like you're just kind of figuring it out, and then you might not have acted on it because you weren't sure if it was the Lord or not, but then after you realize, oh, that was the Lord. I should have said something. That's okay. I'm not kicking you out over this, but let's not have the training wheels on the next time. Let's take a little risk. Yeah, you may end up in the bushes because you didn't know how to use the brakes on the bike, but he'll pick you up. He's not going to yell at you. So now all of a sudden we see the scene, and again, I'm sure a lot of you know it, verse 3 of John chapter 4 says, He left Judea and departed again to Galilee, but he had to go through Samaria. So Bible scholars, what does that mean? Why would that be noteworthy that he had to go to Samaria? Jews didn't go to Samaria, Easter said. Man, there's an obstacle course up here, huh? <laughs> Why not? Well, I won't go into a whole long detail, but... The, the Jews looked at the Samaritans as half-breeds and as people who had their own temple, but it wasn't a legitimate temple. So, you know, when Jesus in another part of the scripture uses the Samaritan, the good Samaritan, that's a big deal because that would be like, no way, there can't be a good one of those. Now, put yourself in this place, and if you've got bias against somebody, Democrats or Republicans, just throw that one in there. Oh no, it couldn't, that couldn't have been the hero because those people are all bad. See, how, see how, how disrespectful that is? To throw somebody in a whole group? You can't do that. So there's, there's not a, a, it's not a minor point that this is taking place in Samaria because there's tension between the Jews and the Samaritans. So verse 5, he came to the city in Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat, sat thus by the well, and it was about noon, okay, the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria, which we call the woman at the well, came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. All right, so now go back to the picture of the person at the door about to cross through into their destiny, into the eight, the seven is over, and the new cycle is starting. This could be every day for us. You, you believe me, or is that a stretch? Does it sound like too much work? <laughs> Don't I ever get a day off? Well, you don't want a day off. You don't want a day when you're separated from God and he's not talking to you and you're not hearing his voice. It's, it's not work. He's a good dad. So you, ah, you, you would hate a day off because you want to hear from him. All right, so here he is. Jesus is walking through, and in the natural, he's thirsty. And this woman is there, and we know by virtue of retrospect, but looking back on it, that he got a prophetic word for her. What was it? How many husbands had she had? I'm trying to make the questions easy. Okay. Five husbands. We don't know when he got that word, do we? Do any of you think he got it when he had breakfast in the morning? Right. Think about that. So it wasn't like... God gave him a download of instructions for the day. At noon, you're going to meet this woman at the well, and here's what you say. But some people think that. Or some people think, well, I'm just not prophetic. You know, he just doesn't talk to me. Well, that you could have to call Dyphus on God if you didn't talk to his kids. And we're not calling Dyphus on God. If you don't think he's talking, it's not his part. It's our part that we're not hearing what he's saying. Clean out the wax a little bit. Because it's not him. He's talking. He loves us. There might be times that we have to wait longer than we'd like. Anybody else been there? All right. But he's talking. So we know he gets the word, but he didn't give it yet. Whatever that yet is. And, and I'm really pointing this out for a reason. Because just because you got the word doesn't mean you should give it in that second. It means you want to cook on it a little bit. You want to let it simmer, marinate. Good. The cooks jumped right in with marinate. Love that. I was, at a, I was at a worship leader conference one time, 
and this guy, jazz player, he was so good. And we were all playing, and, you know, we were not ex that experienced. And he goes, guys, guys, slow down a little. He's going, you're boiling the pot, and the lid is popping off. you got to just let it simmer. <laughs> oh, I'll never forget it. Oh, I get it. Soften it up a little. Still boiling. A simmer is still a boil. See, that's how we're kind of interacting with God here. It's like, okay, I got the word, but I'm not going to just blurt it out because you're going to keep kind of walking me through with this woman. And what's the first thing he says is give me a... Now, is he thirsty in the natural? But you think God might have said there's a little more here than just a water story. And, and this is the brilliance of Jesus, right? But it's not just the brilliance of Jesus. I believe every Christian could become this interactive with God to be listening along the way and just to be waiting to listen to what the Father is saying about this particular woman. Now, you know, in his day, the Samaritans are already a despised class of people. Women, in general, are a despised class of people. They're not even considered, you know, forget about citizenship and voting and all of that. They're like property. And he already knows that she's had five husbands, and the guy that she's living with now is not her husband, doesn't he? That could cause a little negative reaction, couldn't it? Look down upon her as somebody who really does not have her act together and is a defiled person. Now, does God give up on this lady? Never. See how quick we said it. Do we? <laughs> Sometimes. See, I think that's part of the deal. He's trying to say, but for the grace of God, that could be me. And you're like, no way, I would never do that. Well, you don't know that. There's just no way you could possibly know that. It doesn't mean let people run over you and just say everything's okay. No, but you look at them first and say, love believes the best. Not too late. This lady is not beyond hope. Same with the woman caught in adultery, right? Brilliant the way he responded. Go ahead, cast the first stone as long as you don't have any sin. Drop, 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 drop. Right? So, same thing. He's just listening. And now he's listening. And give me a drink. The woman of Samaria says to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? Two strikes. Samaritan and woman. She doesn't know there's really three strikes because he knows she's had five husbands. But he knows, and he's like, boy, lady, is this your lucky day? No. He didn't say that, did he? He didn't go, please. No. That doesn't happen with him, does it? Aren't you glad it didn't happen for you? Because <laughs> when have you been able for somebody, I mean, for me anyway, I don't know about y'all, they could have easily went, whoop, whoop. True. How is it that you, being a Jew, she said, ask for me, a Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Now, uh, the picture I saw this week, I shared it Tuesday night, was the, the movie The Walk. If you haven't seen it, it's a great movie. See it. It's about the guy, uh, Philippe Petit, who stretched a wire between the two World Trade Towers before they were officially opened, and he walked across the wire between the two World Trade Towers. If you have a fear of heights, you watch this movie, you're like in the corner, in a fetal position, because they do such an amazing job with the photography while he's out on the wire. And while he's out on the wire, he actually kneels down. He's got the bar. And then he actually lays down flat on the wire all the way up at the top between those two buildings and then obviously gets back up and walks across. It's unbelievable. Now, the application was... God was saying, on one side of the wire for Jesus right now is all the things that he could say. Think of all the discriminating things he could say about this woman because he already got the download of the word. And it isn't a good word, is it? But think about all the things he should say on the other side of the wire. And this is how our lives are. We're just walking this balancing act between what we could say and what we should say. So we have to arrest our mouth and turn the authority of our mouth over so that when we open it, the Lord fills it, not some junk in our trunk that pops out when we pop open the trunk. 